Good morning, good morning, good morning. There is no reason that today is not going to be the best day yet. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Grant me patience with the struggles that take time, and appreciation for all that I have, tolerance of those with different struggles, and the strength to get up and try again, one day at a time. October 30th. Thought for the day. I have real friends where I had none before. My drinking companions could hardly be called my real friends, though when drunk we seem to have the closest kind of friendship. My idea of friendship has changed. Friends are no longer people whom I can use for my own pleasure or profit. Friends are now people who understand me and I them, whom I can help and who can help me to live a better life. I have learned not to hold back and wait for friends to come to me, but to go halfway and to be met halfway, openly and freely. Does friendship have a new meaning for me? Meditation for the day. There is a time for everything. We should learn to wait patiently until the right time comes. Easy does it. We waste our energies in trying to get things before we are ready to have them, before we have earned the right to receive them. A great lesson we have to learn is how to wait with patience. We can believe that all our life is a preparation for something better to come when we have earned the right to it. We can believe that God has a plan for our lives and that this plan will work out in the fullness of time. Prayer for the day. I pray that I may learn the lesson of waiting patiently. I pray that I may not expect things until I have earned the right to have them. Spot on, as usual. From the thought for the day, How many times did we have our faux friends where we would get together, drink, drug, spouting the great things we were going to do tomorrow and how our friendship was unshakable, only to wake up in the morning with embarrassing regret about what we disclosed to these people that we just met in a lot of cases, telling our innermost secrets, a lot of it apocryphal, grandiose thoughts, even believing our own BS. And then we woke up with that, an unshakable hangover of regret that we disclosed those things. Embarrassing is almost worse than the alcohol and drug hangover. Realizing that birds of a feather flock together, lie with the dogs, get fleas. My class of cohorts continued to go down and down and down. Not that they were necessarily bad, nor was I. But they and I were sick. Was I am no longer sick. We, we have found the solution. We all can, and we can pass that on to others. And that is the solution. Passing on what was so freely given to us, to those that are ignorant that there is a solution. There is a better solution than drinking and drugging to try to ease the pain. Now we can be vulnerable to others and not fear being judged or rejected because we have God with us. And when our will is aligned with his will, when we're not being selfish or self-centered, when we are pure of heart, and if someone is not interested, we can move on without taking it personally, as our former childish selves did. We don't have to worry about the right time because we are no longer trying to run the show. The meditation for the day is spot on too. There is time for everything. We can learn to be patient. We don't have to worry about the right time because we are no longer trying to run the show, choreographing the timing and the outcomes. They will come on their own. It's been said early in the rooms, we are not in the results business, we are in the footwork business. Today, patience comes easily to most of us because our higher power is trustworthy and dependable. We've started some of us in developing that relationship with the higher power where we prove to each other that we're willing to do the footwork and our higher power unspeakingly has provided for us peace of mind and that patience. We only have impatient episodes when we think we are in charge, when we try to take our will back. How much easier it is when we remember that he is driving the bus and that he is a good driver. On awakening, let us think about the 24 hours ahead. We consider our plans for the day Before we begin, we ask God to direct our thinking, especially asking that it be divorced from self-pity, dishonest, or self-seeking motives. 
Under these conditions, we can employ our mental faculties with assurance, for after all, God gave us brains to use. Our thought life will be placed on a much higher plane when our thinking is cleared of wrong motives. In thinking about our day, we may face indecision. We may not be able to determine which course to take. Here we ask God for inspiration, an intuitive thought or a decision. We relax and take it easy. We don't struggle. We are often surprised how the right answers come after we have tried this for a while. What used to be the hunch or the occasional inspiration gradually becomes a working part of the mind. Being still inexperienced and having just made conscious contact with God, it is not probable that we are going to be inspired at all times. We might pray for this presumption in all sorts of absurd actions and ideas. Nevertheless, we find that our thinking will, as time passes, be more and more on the plane of inspiration. We come to rely upon it. We usually conclude the period of meditation with a prayer that we be shown all through the day what our next step is to be, that we be given whatever we need to take care of such problems. We ask especially for freedom from self-will and are careful to make no request for ourselves only. We may ask for ourselves, however, if others will be helped. We are careful never to pray for our own selfish ends. Many of us have wasted a lot of time doing that and it doesn't work. You can easily see why. If circumstances warrant, we ask our wives or friends to join us in morning meditation. If we belong to a religious denomination which requires a definite morning devotion, we attend to that also. If not members of religious bodies, we sometimes select and memorize a few set prayers which emphasize the principles we have been discussing. There are many helpful books also. Suggestions about these may be obtained from one's priest, minister, or rabbi. Be quick to see where religious people are right. Make use of what they offer. As we go through the day, we pause when agitated or doubtful and ask for the right thought or action. We constantly remind ourselves we are no longer running the show. Humbly saying to ourselves many times each day, Thy will be done. We are then in much less danger of excitement, fear, anger, worry, self-pity or foolish decisions. We become much more efficient. We do not tire so easily, for we are not burning up energy foolishly as we did when we were trying to arrange life to suit ourselves. It works. It really does. We alcoholics are undisciplined, so we let God discipline us in the simple way we have just outlined. But this is not all. There is action and more action. Faith without works is dead. fan frickin -tastic. That's just the boost we need. He is the principal. We are the agents. What a great way to start the morning. Get out there and carpe the diem, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.